for the next slide. We train pharmaceutical technicians for the pharmacy industry. Next slide. We train chemtechs for the chemical industry. Bayer, Calvin, Carbon, Nova Chemical, PPG, Alcoa. You come to Pittsburgh, as Jim and others have done, you'll see welfare mothers using four-year bachelor of science degree chemistry textbooks, learning the technology in 10 months flat, and working for these Fortune 100 companies that sure don't sit on this stage. And the point of the story is that the environment drives performance. You can take people right here in Lawndale, and you give me the right equipment and the right facility, I'll have them doing research technology in 12 months flat, right here in this neighborhood. Next slide. That's one of our guys, next slide. That's our library, more of our handcrafted furniture. Unfortunately, we have people in the library with high school diplomas that they can't read. Not one of them, but a lot of them. And we're going to lose this country if we got kids walking the streets with diplomas that they can't read. This is the arts program that I started in 1968 in the streets during the riots. I was a ceramic artist. Public school teacher saved my life, so I built this thing to work with these poor kids in the streets. Next slide. So we do clay photography and digital imaging. That's ceramics. Next slide. This is all kids' work. Artistic aptitude, whatever that is, is not a requirement to get in the program. And the idea is that we take kids who drop in out of public school at the rate of 50 percent. I graduate 95 percent of those kids every year for the last 20 years in a row. And I don't teach the academics. What I teach is motivation. If you can get the kids motivated, they'll learn algebra. If they don't want to live, you can't teach them anything. Mm -hmm. So what we figured out through trial and error is that the arts is a great strategy for rebuilding the human spirit. If you rebuild the human spirit, you teach them algebra. Right. Next slide. That's a mosaic project we did with the kids. Next slide. This is one of the pieces they did. Next slide. That's the piece they did for the school. These are the kids with no ability to remember, who supposedly don't know how to do anything. Well, they did that. So obviously, they know what they're doing. Next slide. We did photography, next slide. Uh, that kid took that picture working for Disney, next slide. This is the gallery for the kids. This is the student show for inner city children. And when we have the shows, our culinary department does a formal food presentation for the art opening. And there's a museum quality invitation that's printed for the kids' shows. So by the time the children graduate from high school, they've had four shows on their resume and a PowerPoint, which is what they hand to the admissions officer when they go to college. So I'm graduating 95% of these kids, over 90% of them are going to college, 20 years in a row, and I do not teach the academics. Now, if you can't be that lucky. I'm telling you, it's about the way that you think about kids and the way that you think about yourself. Next slide. Uh, this is an old slide. Actually, before I met some of you guys, I actually had slides in a box with duct tape on the corner. And I can talk about a tent ministry, Reverend. Huh? So I'm out there in Silicon Valley with a little slideshow with a slide projector. And this lady came out of the audience and she said, man, I feel sorry for you. I said, well, you feel sorry for me? She said, your computer's getting a little bit old. Well, I ain't no high tech guy. I said, well, we can do for a living. She said, oh, I help my computer with Packard. I said, well, my dear, we can solve this problem instantaneously. <laughs> and we got a million bucks of HP and the systems engineer to go with it. And we now have one of the head of digital imaging centers east of the Mississippi River, courtesy of HP. But I keep this slide in here for nostalgia reasons, and you never know when an Apple representative might be in the audience. <laughs> That's what HP and Steelcase built. This is called a school, folks. This is how you're supposed to treat your children. You put a kid in that environment, they're doing advanced technology in about 12 months. Next slide. Oh, we also stuck a music hall in the north end of the building on our building, and Dizzy Gillespie showed up. And I said to Dizzy, why don't you come to a black school in the middle of the inner city, it doesn't even have a reputation in music. He said, Billy Taylor told me a black guy built something and believe one speak for himself. And you ought to build one of these things in every city in this country, and I'm going to help you do it. So he allowed us to record his concert, he gave us the rights to the music. And then Herbie Hancock showed up, and Shirley Horn, and Betty Carter, and Dakota Staten, and the bass and band, and Joe Williams. And 600 recordings later, and six Grammys later, we have our own record label. We haven't seen jams in the record label. Mm -hmm. And this is going back to the drug story. That's, uh, that's a place on open night, and you would drop the bomb in that room and wipe it on the rich people in Pennsylvania. <laughs> so they were all sitting there, including my mom and dad, who are in the third row. They're both deceased, but they live long enough to see their kid build this thing in the neighborhood and open it up black guy. 
The next night I had the neighbors come in and had the same food both times. Because I wanted to establish the principle that you don't have to be wearing a tuxedo to be treated like somebody who deserves to wear one. And so we got that problem solved. Next slide. There's Dizzy. Next slide. That's Billy Taylor and Jerry Mulligan. They're out of the way to top ten. That's Pat Matheny and Jim Hall. Next slide. Paul Simon's engineer has designed that acoustically perfect recording studio for free. So we have one of the best digital recording studios in the United States of America in a black neighborhood. It looks just like Ron did. Next slide. And Nancy Wilson did back-to-back -back Grammys with us. So for all practical purposes, we are really Nancy Wilson's recording company. Next slide. These are all kids in the public school system. Next slide. This is burned out during the riots. This is thought I was in the fancy part of town. That's the neighborhood where I cook for the center. Next slide. So I had another box built in the streets again. I built a 60,000 square foot medical tech building. It's not as cool as your medical tech building, but I didn't know y'all then. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the problem. The next slide. The University of Pittsburgh Medical Center took half the building for their building operation. I took the lease board down. Um, $8 million built the building thing actually makes money. Next slide. And uh, we got a bank in there. Next slide. And I built a greenhouse. We built a 65 square foot greenhouse. And we have welfare moms and single parents growing orchids in the middle of the inner city. And we sell them in the grocery stores and we generate money for the center. And it's one of the best advanced technology horticultural training centers in the United States of America. You come to Pittsburgh, I'll show you welfare mothers growing orchids. Good for their spirits in addition to the pocketbooks. And we take the money and then subsidize the education program. See, everything I'm showing you today is free. The reason it's free is poor people don't have the money for the tuition. So we generate some CDs and rental income. You guys, what you guys do. So we can provide a world-class education that people don't have much of. Next slide. Those are the orchids. Next slide. And by the way, we took first and second prize in the orchid symposium. So now all the orchid people meet at my center in the this neighborhood. Next slide. And this is new. You're the second group that's actually seen this slide. Where's our hydroponic diet? I just right. saw it. There it is. Yeah. I have plans for you, man. All right. Okay. Uh, we're going to build one of these. This right. is called Verticrop. This is a bigger version of what you're working on. It's 18 feet in the air. It's 60 feet long. And we figured out a way to grow under glass, hydroponic lettuce, et cetera, et cetera, basil, herbs, and so forth. And we can do it pesticide free. 24-7 in the middle of the inner city and sell it to the grocery stores to make money doing it. So stay tuned on that one. In fact, the reason I have to go back to Pittsburgh tonight, we're having the financing meeting for the greenhouse tomorrow morning. So pray for me. <laughs> this is the technology. Now, I'm down to the end of the presentation. My goal is to build at least 100 centers in the U.S. and 100 around the world yesterday. These are the ones that are open. Cleveland, Grand Rapids, Frisco, New Haven, and Cincinnati are open and operating. Tim was there, saw the new one in New Haven. They knocked the ball about 500 feet out of the park, man. I mean, like, big time. Next slide. This is the space before it was fixed up in Frisco. Next slide. Those are the kids. That's Jeff Skull, who created eBay. He's one of my backers. Billy Wong, teaches the kids digital imaging. Next slide. These are the children who used to be throwaways. They're now kids with a life, they got a brilliant future, and a lot of them are working for George Lucas in the film industry. Next slide. There's the kids. Next slide. That's Cincinnati. Got to drop that rate to 6% in 24 months now I live in Cincinnati. Next slide. This is some of the kids' work. Next slide. These children. There's nothing wrong with these kids. That affection and sunlight and good food can't cure. That's why I won the MacArthur Genius Award. I figured out the cure for spiritual cancer. Next slide. Here's the kids. Next slide. These, this is the mural project the kids did. They charged ten thousand dollars a mural. They turned it into a business. Next slide. This is Grand Rapids. Next slide. This is these photographs are of Dr. King, taken during the last two years of his life by Life Magazine photographer until he was assassinated. Mrs. King saw the photographs before she died in Pluto. And I wanted to make sure that these children knew who this man was. This is the food facility for the kids. This is what they eat. Next slide. Western Michigan Center. And next slide. So stop right there. Go back. Um, these are all kids doing digital imaging. 
who supposedly can't learn anything about photography. Well, we got to drop that rate grant. We have to decide for something. Next slide. And these are some of the kids. And one of the things that we discovered when I was out visiting the centers, I said, what's different about this picture? I kept looking at the kids, and I said, what's missing? They had all pulled their pants up. I said, wow, that's very interesting. Without me telling them to put the pants on. The other kids did. That's how you change behavior. Let these children evolve into the right men on their own. We don't have to get them lecture. They've had enough of that. What we have to do is to build a culture so that the children know what responsible behavior looks like. And you treat them with affection and warmth, not contempt and hatred. Next slide. These are all well used to be welfare mothers. They're all now pharmaceutical technicians working for the DeVos Medical Center in downtown Grand Rapids. I'm teaching these guys pharmaceutical applications. They were on welfare, you know, a year ago. Well, they're not on welfare now. They're doing fine. Next slide. And this is Cleveland. Next slide. These are the kids. We saw the kids get off the bus for the first time and come to the center, and they walked away because they thought they got off at the wrong stop. Next slide. These are the kids. Next slide. This guy trained, uh, recorded with Alicia Keys. He set up the recording program. Next slide. These are the kids. Next slide. This is our first graduation of pharmacy kids. Next slide. Actually, pharmacy adults. There's the facility. Oh, by the way, I was at the graduation last month. 100% of the students passed the National Pharmaceutical Exam on the first take. Wow. Next slide. This is New Haven. We just opened New Haven up. We're doing med tech, big time. This is the one we're playing for Boston. Next slide. So Boston, Broadway, Buffalo. These are all now in motion, by the way. Next slide. And uh, there's Donna. Yeah. Um, and then the high from Richmond and the Virgin Islands. Next slide. And we're talking to these three cities about uh, moving forward. And Vancouver and Northern Israel. And now Japan talking about uh, doing this with survivors of the tsunami. Next slide. And there's the bill. Bobby Steele and I and Kim and a few other folks, Brian, walked the hallways of Congress with this bill in our hand trying to get this thing passed. And we may pull this off yet. If the president sneaks back, and I think he will, I think he's going to be in a great position to support this bill. And we can build these things on his watch. Mm -hmm. That is very possible. If the other guy gets in, we'll talk to him too. <laughs> and then we have a book out. My book is called Make Impossible Possible. It tells this whole story. First chapter is from the ghetto to the Harvard Business School. So what I'm telling you all tonight in this unfortunately very short manner is we can solve this problem. And we can solve it in long day. You've got the team in place. You've got the, you've got the intelligence. You have the value. And you've got the political leadership, I believe, uh, to get this done. And I'm recommitting myself, Bobby, uh, to do this pastor uh, because it's the right thing to do. I'm not changing my mind. I'm not going to change my profession. I'm prepared to put my life on the line for this work because I believe in it so much. And we've got to get these centers built because um, the country's dying now. We're, we're losing these children. Good news is we have answers. Thank you for listening to me and for this award. And God bless you for what you do. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I'm probably going to have to go.